Good evening on this Tuesday night from Charlotte. I'm James Briarton with a live Carolina Weather Group special weather forecast update. You're looking live right now from resort cams at Blowing Rock in the western North Carolina mountains. Take a careful look at the power lines right on there. You can start to see little tiny icicles that are forming because of an ongoing winter weather threat. It's chapter one of a two-day chapter that will eventually lead to flash flooding tomorrow. But let's start with the winter weather that's happening tonight in the western North Carolina mountains. You can see right now a look at the National Weather Service alerts and warnings that are out. They're on your screen right now. If you're listening to the audio podcast, we do have an ice storm warning for portions of Burke and Avery counties. This goes until 7 a.m. on Wednesday for ice accumulation up to half an inch. Anything greater than a quarter an inch of ice could lead to power outages and dangerous road conditions. Then this purple color, this is a winter weather advisory because of ice icing, maybe some snow flurries. And then we do have some counties that do also have a winter storm warning where they're expecting a little bit more in terms of ice and snow accumulations. But really the peak of this, the highlight of this is the ice storm warning. This is really where the peak of the impacts are expected to be. We can actually go ahead and look to see what we've seen so far as of about the eight o'clock hour on this Tuesday night. And as we push the map on into North Carolina, you can start to see we are getting some early reports of snowfall. So these purple numbers here in Flatwood, North Carolina, for instance, almost three inches of snow, another three inch snow report coming in in Nella. Same here as I make my way towards Glendale Springs, freezing rain accumulation with quarter of an inch of ice. Again, that is enough ice accumulation to have impacts on things like power lines, as we saw at the beginning of this broadcast from the camera there in blowing rock. So certainly impacts being felt across the mountains tonight. If you have electric heat, you're certainly going to want to make sure you have a backup way to get uh, heating safely into your home in the event that you lose power. Total ice accumulations, the additional ice accumulations that can be expected as we go through the remainder of Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And you can see the National Weather Service is still calling for, again, a quarter to half inch of additional ice accumulations. So that's obviously going to be quite the impact. Let's look at Futurecast here as we play on through the high resolution rapid refresh model. The red uh, area that you see at the top, that is kind of that mixing between the snow boundary, which is into northern Virginia and into the northeast. Obviously, the green is red, but that purple area, that's where we're going to see the icing. That's where we're going to see the wintry mix precipitation. You can see for the most part, it's at the higher elevations in western North Carolina. It's up there against the Virginia border, maybe even sneaking down towards portions of the triad and the triangle where we can see a little bit in way of ice. Uh, and then here comes round two. You'll see the winter weather for the most part coming round two moves on out and it's really just rainfall. So let's play this one more time. This is where we are tonight. You can see as we go on through the next few hours, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, continuous ice falling across portions of, the, again, those higher elevations, especially in Avery and Burke County where the ice storm warning is out. And then while we will have some periods of breaks in terms of rain on Wednesday, you can see a lot of rain falls on Wednesday into Thursday before eventually moving on out uh, later on Thursday as it pushes its way off to the east. So what does that exactly mean for us in terms of rainfall uh, across the area? Because that's kind of chapter two here. Chapter two of all of this is going to be a flooding threat, especially across uh, Helene damaged areas in western North Carolina, where we know a lot of you are still dealing with temporary bridges and temporary roadways. Uh, the, we're looking at total rainfall amounts of at least two to three inches, maybe three to four in some places such as Brevard or Waynesville. Asheville, you're looking at about one and a half to two inches. Newland, two to three inches. That two to three mark really extends all the way across some of the higher elevations there as you start to make your way up towards the Tennessee mountains, but also down across the foothills hills. That includes like Hickory and Forest City and of course Chimney Rock into upstate South Carolina. That's kind of all in that two to three inch mark in terms of rainfall accumulation, liquid rainfall. Then we start to push three to four inches as we make our way back into those higher elevations, western North Carolina over towards Cherokee, 
Franklin, Robbinsville, even, you know, if you were to look at like Tacoa, Georgia, and kind of the extreme northeast corner of Georgia that butts right up against western North Carolina and upstate South Carolina, that's where we're pushing two, three, four inches of rain. Where I am in Charlotte, the I-77 corridor, we're still looking at about one and a half to two inches of rain. The numbers start to drop off after that, but this is kind of that bullseye area where we're anticipating quite a bit of rainfall. If we switch you back on over uh, to Futurecast, what I can actually show you here is if I take it out of winter mode and actually switch that same model I showed you a minute ago that was showing you precipitation types and instead switch it back over. Of course, you're used to seeing rain on a lot of radar and Futurecast products. You can see the intensity of this rain on again, off again from Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday. We'll talk about whether or not any of these will have a chance to be strong to severe in just a moment. But look at the total rainfall accumulation that the model is putting out in addition to whatever you saw on Tuesday. So in addition to whatever you saw on Tuesday, as we go through the overnight hours through Wednesday and Thursday, we're looking again at two, three uh, maybe four inches of rainfall accumulations in some places. And so that is why the Weather Prediction Center, the arm of NOAA that does the forecasting for flash flooding, is going to take this from what is currently uh, a marginal threat in just western North Carolina and expand that out to be a marginal flash flood threat, at least a 5% chance as far east as Raleigh on Wednesday, all across the Piedmont into portions of the Sandhills in upstate South Carolina. But it actually gets elevated to a slight risk, at least a 15% chance of seeing flash flooding Anderson, Greenville, Spartanburg, Clemson, upstate South Carolina, along with Asheville, Bryson City, Cherokee on the western North Carolina areas. You can see it's not exactly the same areas that saw the icing, while both the areas that are seeing the icing could see the flash flooding and vice versa. The biggest flash flooding threat come Wednesday and Thursday will actually be back towards uh, the western and upstate portions of South Carolina and North Carolina, respectively. And you can kind of see that here on the map. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at here as we head on through the next 24, 48 hours or so. We'll start to see some sunshine return across the Carolinas as we get to later on in the week. But we have kind of a twofold weather event that's already started here on this Tuesday. We'll continue Wednesday into Thursday. And that has to do with the icing threat that's happening right now in the mountains, followed by the flooding threat. And then, yes, there is even the chance that we could see a few rumbles of thunder as we look ahead to later on in the week. This is this is actually Thursday's severe weather prediction center outlook. You can see it's not any of the categorical tiers we typically tell you about for severe weather. That would be from one, two, three, four, five, all the way from marginal up to high. This is just the chance the chance that we could see some rumbles of thunder, some lightning across kind of a stretch of, again, South Carolina from the I-85 corridor down to Columbia, uh, as well as the Charlotte metro area over towards Fayetteville and central North Carolina. We'll keep an eye on that, whether or not that severe threat can go up or down at all. But what a way just to kind of bookend this whole thing, you know, from ice that is occurring right now in portions of the mountains to that flash flooding threat over portions of the mountains mountainous communities uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. And then even, like we said, a, maybe a rumble of thunder possible. So a little bit of everything as we head on through the next uh, couple of days. So how can you stay abreast of what's happening? We'll be back on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for our weekly weather podcast covering weather science technology from the Carolinas and beyond. Our guest will be my WCNC colleague, Nate Morabito. Uh, he's going to be coming on. He uh, did some investigations uh, with regards to Helene recovery and FEMA trailers. Uh, so he'll be talking to us about that. And of course, we'll be giving you live updates on the winter weather and the flash flooding threat uh, that will be ongoing at that time. So I hope you'll join me back here live Wednesday night on YouTube, on the audio podcast, or wherever it is you hang out with the Carolina Weather Group. We appreciate you doing just that. But for now, from Charlotte, I'm James Briarton. Stay safe, stay warm, stay inside if you can. And we'll see you back here Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern for our weekly